Hey, everybody, so let's work a little bit more with our fantastic worlds here and learn a few more concepts in Houdini. Uh, one thing is when you're working with a smaller screen like I am here and you need to uh, make the best use of your screen landscape, you can use these little arrows so that you can maximize either the node network or using the down arrow, I can return it to a split view. Using the down arrow again, I can maximize the inspector and use this button to flip up and flip up again. So I'm going to be doing that in this tutorial. Uh, so one thing I want to show you is I want to show you the bypass flag. Every object has this leftmost flag with the yellow arrow above it. If you click that, it will bypass the node. The node will stay in the network, but it'll be deactivated. So I'm doing that with these UV quick shades just so I can get back to this nice, clean look without removing the node in case I want to go back and take a look at that node later. So how can we take these buildings and spread them out over the entire planet? Well, that's actually really easy. Right now, we're scattering only on the group top. But if we don't want to scatter on the group top, we just delete that group. And now we're scattering across the whole globe. And that's pretty neat. But you notice immediately the buildings are not rotating with the curvature of the sphere. Why is that? Well, that's because we're missing something called normals. Normals are the vectors that tell the computer which way light should be reflected off of the surface. And those normals are also used by the copy to points node to rotate the shapes that are being copied. So we're going to add normals using the normal node to our sphere. And importantly, we're going to make the normals on the points. And as soon as we do that, we see, aha, now the buildings are being rotated according to the curvature of the sphere. Because we're copying to points, we needed to add the normals to the points. Now, of course, these are sort of long, warehousey buildings. That's pretty interesting. But if we wanted to make them tall buildings, we can just switch the shape of our buildings. Oh, that's quite nice, too. Kind of tall and wide buildings. And of course, any modification we make to this box is also going to be reflected in every copy. So for instance, we could do a Boolean operation. Take a sphere here, and I want to match it to pretty close to the uniform scale of the box. 0 0.03, perhaps. And I'll add a Boolean. I'll look at the result of that. Oh, that's pretty interesting, just sort of right off the bat, creates this rounded, this rounded form. And if we go back and render our whole thing, we're seeing, ah, now we have these sort of tombstone shapes. That's, that's kind of interesting. Um, wow, that's, that's really unexpected, or maybe it's almost even floral in the way that it looks. Um, and if I go to the Boolean node, and instead of intersect, I choose subtract. Now I have these sort of fragments orbiting the world. I'll render that Boolean. And you can also ghost any shape that you want by clicking on this pink tab. So there's the ghost of my rectangle and the results of my Boolean. There's the ghost of my sphere. So what else could I do with this? Well, I could move the sphere up, perhaps. Um, move the center up by 0.1. Now I have this scooped out shape. Let's see what that looks like in my world. Oh, that's really, that's really cool. Sort of these hook-like structures on the planet. So you can really like get a tremendous amount of variation in what's happening just by varying the shape that's being copied to all the points. Go back and do a little bit more with this. Um, what happens if I 
move this spear to the side. So I've just kind of scooped out the side of my building form. And now all my buildings have this scoop on the top of them. It's really easy to get to unique results. So what if I wanted my buildings to only scatter onto my landform? Well, first I'd have to reestablish my landforms, going back to our idea from the earlier tutorial. I'd add a mountain. And already something pretty interesting happens right there because my points are being spread out on the mountain. So you see my points are scattered no longer on a spherical shape. And so my copy to points are spread out along this non-spherical surface. It wasn't what I was looking for, but it was what I found, and it's pretty cool. Um, so I can manipulate this mountain so that it's giving me something more along the lines of the land mass that I want. And in order to do that, I can drop down a merge node here, merge this back with the sphere, add a color. So I can tell what's land and what's not land. And send my render flag to that merge node. So now I can really see what I'm doing. And see what I've done here is I've just set up this merge. I may or may not use it in my eventual geometry, but I can render it in order to help me so I'll go to my mountain node and make some adjustments. Can take the height way down. Mess with this element size. Get some interesting results. Try some of these other controls here. See what they do. That's pretty nice. Got some land. So I want to scatter points only on the land. How can I do that? Well, we can use group. I'm going to insert a group node here. And I'm going to select everything inside of a bounding sphere. So this is selecting all the not land, right? It's selecting exactly the same area that was covered by the ocean. Why? Because my sphere is sized one by one by one, and the sphere I'm using for the ocean is also sized one by one by one. So my group four here, which I will call, I'll give the group name, not land. My group not land is not the land, but what you can see, because of the resolution of our sphere, this is very, very coarse. These continents are very, very coarse. So we're gonna wanna go back up to our initial sphere and really crank up the resolution on this. Maybe 300 by 300. And now I'm getting a much finer border to my land. Let's even make it 500 by 500. If this is if this bogs your computer down, you don't have to go up that high. Go to whatever still gives you smooth motion on your computer. So now I have this group that is all the not land. And I can delete with a delete node.
that whole group of not land. And it's gone, right? We see, oh, I'm still ghosting this sphere here. We see that I've got just the land form. So now when I scatter my points, I'm going to be scattering them only on the land. And so when I build my buildings using copy to points, they'll be built only on the land. They're too big right now, um, so I'm going to go to my attribute randomize, where we're randomizing the scale, and I can actually reduce the global scale in my attribute randomize, which will make my buildings smaller. And I'm going to take them back to being traditional buildings. I'm going to get rid of this Boolean node. And now I can put my world back together. I've got my buildings. And here in this merge, I've got my land and my water. So I will connect that and look at my final merge. And now there's my buildings on my land. There are not very many buildings. So I will find my scatter and scatter many, many more. Instead of 300, let's do 3,000. And now I have a pretty crowded urban planet. I'm going to go back to my box and make these more like tall buildings. And what else can I do here? And what's interesting is the mountain had different normals. So these buildings are sticking out at kind of odd angles. That's not a problem we'll solve right now. One way to sort of solve it is just to go into the mountain node and turn down the height. Yeah, that helps quite a bit. Uh, and I think the only other thing I would want to do just aesthetically is these buildings are too evenly distributed. I'd go back to my scatter node and I would relax my iterations to cluster them up. And then I'd probably even make more. This might bog down your computer, but I'll make 5,000 buildings on my planet. Yeah, that's looking, that's looking like something. I like that quite a lot. So find things that you're interested in. Find things that you like. Use these tools. These are very simple, basic tools, but you can use them in lots and lots of different combinations to get a ton of different effects. You can have multiple groups. You can have multiple copy to points. And you can do a tremendous range of things just with this simple set of tools. And we're going to then export these planets and use them in Max. And in order to use them in Max, we're going to need now three different output groups one for the land, one for the ocean, and one for the buildings so that we can have three different textures in Max. So let's take a look at how to do that. Um, right now we have both our land and our sea going into the group called planet. We're going to want to remove, you can wiggle a node to remove it from a patch cord, and make our planet group here, insert a new group node, here, and we'll call this group C. And note that the group name is different than the node name. So this is group 5 called C. And when I enter that, we'll see here that Group 5 is called C. Group 2 is called Planet. If you want to, 
you can certainly change the node name also to match the group name if that's clearer. That's optional. Because it still says group create here, so we still know that this is a group node. We're no longer using this group top, but it's not a problem to leave it there. And then here's our group three city, so we're going to have city, planet, and C when we export. We save the file here, open it up in Max. We're going to have three draw groups, one, two, and three, and those will correspond to city, planet, and C.